Hi, I'm Mark Poulton. I'm a real estate investor in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina area. I'm what you would call a no-frills, no-thrills real estate investor. <clears throat> if you're looking for somebody who's got a real fancy car in the background, maybe uh, you know, is trying to sell you a subscription to their newsletter for $19.99 a month, I'm not that guy. So today I just want to share my thoughts on uh, a, uh, the difficulty someday and, and how it can be infuriating to deal, you know, to be a landlord and, and be in the real estate business. So uh, I work a regular W-2 job and, you know, that has to come first. It's, uh, you know, it, it is the catalyst that has allowed us to, uh, to start, uh, you know, this business and to grow it and, you know, fund our debt and stuff like that. And if you're wondering how much debt we have, we're, uh, we're well upwards of $750,000 and, you know, that fluctuates from, from month to month. Uh, a lot of it gets paid down every month, but. You know, we're always having to fund rehab, so you know, uh, adding another ten thousand dollars a quarter in debt, uh, maybe up to twenty thousand dollars a quarter in debt, is not unreasonable. So um, we had purchased a, a home that was scheduled for demolition, and you know, the city had determined that it was cheaper to rebuild it than it was for uh, for someone to come in and fix it, which I say is, you know, hogwash. I think we put less than uh, twenty five thousand dollars into it. It took us six months longer than uh, than we wanted to, but there was open drug dealer going on on the cul-de-sac. There's one road in and one road out of this development, and they would have lookouts. We actually were able to get with the uh, city vice squad, and they were able to help us clean out not only the street, but the neighborhood, which increased property value and increased rent. So, you know, yay for us, hashtag increased rent. And um, not to mention, you know, it's, it's, a little, it's a lot different when you're dealing with uh, a house that's actually been approved for demolish. We demolition. We had to put down a seventy-six hundred dollar uh, bond with the code enforcement, which would cover their cost of demolition in case we don't live up to our end of the bargain. We had to sign a uh, contract, uh, basically saying that we would get it done in a certain amount of time. I don't like to uh, corner myself into a specific time frame on anything, even in my personal life. So, uh, didn't actually sign it. We kind of had more of a email agreement on it, but. You know, they're pretty cool. There's a lack of housing, quality housing in the Charlotte area. So anytime they can get a house that's ready, you know, scheduled to be demolished because of code enforcement violations, rehabbed and fixed, uh, they're willing to at least work with us a little bit. And actually, they're extremely patient. And, and I'd like to put a shout out to Ben Kreis at the code enforcement for for allowing us to do that. Anyways, I went to pick up the check today. Today's the last day to pay property taxes without being penalized uh, with interest. That, that starts tomorrow. Well, I was hoping to be able to take that check, that cashier's check, down to the tax tax assessor's office, and the tax collector's office, and use it. But it was made out to the city of Charlotte. It should have been made. It needed to be made out to uh, uh, you know the county for because they're they're ba- they're really although they operate as a single entity of Charmac, they're they're basically two different entities. Uh, honestly, I think they probably could have taken the check and nobody would have cared. But you know, it is what it is. When I got there this morning, there weren't very many people. So then I had to go back to my bank, which is SunTrust, which I absolutely hate and loathe. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a little difficult for some other reasons I might get into on another video to, to switch banks right now. We've been thinking about going over to the evil empire of Bank of America, which really, really bothers me. But uh, we may have to. Um, anyways, you know, I just simply wanted to cash the check or uh, have them make out a new one. And of course they're like, hey, we can't do that because it's made out to a business. And I'm like, no, you can, you're just not willing to, uh, which just irritates the hell out of me. It messes up bookkeeping and accounting. It would have been nice, but uh, you know, and, and on top of that, it's not my normal branch I go to. I have two normal branches I go to. This one is uptown and uh, they charged me $8, which just irritated me. You know, for the amount of fees that they extract out of a business account, it just drives me nuts that they're charging me for a cashier's check. Anyways, went back to uh, the tax assessor's office or the tax collector's office. And of course, the line was out the door. It was 1230 now. They had two people working instead of five. Uh, and it just kind of took forever. When I got there, they're very nice people. I'm not saying to give them a hard time or anything. But, uh, you know, I had to pay. In, in addition to that, I had to pay a couple hundred dollars in cash and we have uh, 10 of 12 properties you know, their, their taxes are paid for. But, you know, it took two hours to do all that. And, you know, I've, 
you know, taking two hours of my day with my W two job is it's kind of a big deal. You know, I, I I definitely have to get stuff done. Not to mention, I need to go and pick up some siding or figure out what siding is available, which you would think would not be that hard of a hard of a thing to do. But apparently, finding siding in stock that is not white in the city of Charlotte is uh, well, it's kind of a pain in the ass. It's uh, you know, you would think Home Depot with the amount of much with the amount of money we spend there every year, you think we could just go there and order it, you know, set a warehouse somewhere. We'll get in we'll get in six, seven, ten days. No, can't do that. Went to a place called Lifetime, and uh, when I went there, it was between Christmas and New Year's. Their computer system had just gone down. They may actually have some in stock. I don't know. But I really need to get that going so that uh, we can finish up a home. And and a little bit of motivation on that is uh, you watch, I watch Clayton Morris's at Morris Invest. If you don't know his channel, you should check it out. He's a great guy. Uh, you know, He's talking about how he's missing out on $10,000 a month in rent because he hasn't been really paying attention to uh, – hasn't been focused like a laser beam, right? Like Obama on, on his rental units because he's got three or four other businesses. And, you know, he's got 10 units roughly that are, uh, that are either being rehabbed or, uh, you know, don't, you know, don't have a tenant in it for some reason, whether they're not paying maybe or something like that. And $10,000 a month is, is a, it's a lot of money. It's, it's nothing to shake a stick at. And we're, we're probably uh, $3,500 a month right now with the new one that we just acquired and the two that we're currently rehabbing. And that's, um, you know, that's almost enough for my wife to stop working and come home. So, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a little perturbed at myself for not being motivated enough, for not having the drive to get this done. Honestly, I, I really don't want to do the work at this house. I'd really rather work on the other two. It's my first home. Just a lot of history there. But I need to get it done. I need to get it done right. So that a uh, and it's a beautiful home for what's been done so far, but I need to get it right so that um, you know we can get a nice long-term family in there that'll take care of the property and will be proud to call it their own place. And then, you know, I had to go pay uh, I had to go pay three mortgages with our private mortgage agents. I needed to uh, I need to have a forty-six thousand uh, dollar balloon payment due this month, and I have about thirty-six thousand of it. Uh, to another private mortgage individual, and I don't know how I'm going to make all that work. Uh, it'll, we'll, we'll find a way. We also have, you know, uh, you know, we do a lot of cash advance on credit cards for zero percent interest, and uh, you know, we have about twelve thousand left on one. That you know, the offer expires in April, end of April this year, and so there's just a lot of things going on that you know we have to deal with, or at least I have to deal with, and uh, it's. It can be overwhelming at times. It can be frustrating at times. You know, I write paper checks for all of it. You know, I actually go by the banks for my individual private mortgage holders and, and give them, you know, and write, you know, and, and actually deposit it into their account. I like doing it that way because it's easier on the statements to actually look. You know, I can I can do everything the way that I want. I can make the uh, uh, memo line the way that I want. You know, and frankly, I kind of like writing checks. It's just not uh, not that big of a deal, but we have um, we have two homes that are going to be paid for this year, and that's uh, it's a really big deal. It's about seven sixteen fifty the mortgage payments we're not going to have to make every month, and we can start putting that towards other debts and you know servicing you know the rehabs that we've had to do. Anyways, just wanted to let you know that. Even though real estate investing is a passive income, it is not necessarily a passive um, activity. So I work, uh, I work really hard, you know, maintaining all the documents and trying to get everything done, and trying to to get to the point where you know we've reached financial freedom. My freedom number was 40 homes, and I can guarantee you, at 40 homes, we will not have to worry about money again. But it's probably more like 30. I think my wife, uh, we're looking at 18 to 19, which will be, uh, will be pretty close at the end of this year. And uh, she comes home and doesn't have to work anymore. For me, it's right at about 30. I think that we can we can make that happen. We may stretch it out another another year or two just to service debt so that we're in a, just an awesome position. And and a lot of this also depends on uh, our ability to, to weather what most 
people that I respect in the financial side are saying is is a coming financial apocalypse. Anyways, I hope you go out there and to live the you won't stop me lifestyle. I can tell you this, you are not going to stop me. And uh, today's deadlift day at the gym, and I can guarantee you that those uh, those weights will not stop me because I have a lot of frustration to uh, to get out. Anyways, I wish you success.